In business, the 2020 appropriation bill tagged budget of sustainable growth and job creation was unfortunately welcomed to the spread of the global pandemic and has left the Ministry of Finance with little or no option but to revise the national and FIRS budget. And joining me to live to speak on this is Associate Director, Tax Advisory and Regulatory Services, Anderson Tax, Michael Angle. Good afternoon, Mr. Angle. Um, afternoon, Abaka. Hi. I'm very well, thank you. Thanks for coming on this afternoon. Thank now, you for inviting me. Right. It's understood that the federal government of Nigeria is looking to seek concessional funding from World Bank and uh, ADB and the Islamic Development Bank to finance the 2020 budget. What's your take on this? All right. Um, so, Abaka, I think we have to start from asking ourselves what is a budget? I think a budget at best is really a projection of, um, you know, your revenue expectations and how you intend to spend them. So a budget is not sacrosanct. It's not something that is cast in stone, um, as we've seen, of course. Uh, so at best, a budget is a projection, which is what the federal government has set out in the 2020 Appropriations uh, Act. Unfortunately, you know, we've been confronted with this pandemic that has significantly altered all the projections. Mm -hmm. um, in that sense, you really have no option but to speak for funding wherever you get it in order to bridge the gap that will come from the revenue shortfall. Mm -hmm. So uh, with respect to looking for funding from uh, whether it's the IMF or you know, the ADB or Islamic Bank, I think there's nothing wrong with it in that step. Uh, what is important is that uh, whatever funds are gotten from borrowing are properly used and utilized in sectors that will help you grow the economy post-COVID-19. So for me, you know, I think that um, it's, it's, it's welcome. It's a welcome development. Um, at this time, everybody's looking for friends. You're looking for partners who would um, help your economy. So if, if this uh, multilateral body that are willing to advance these loans to us, then by all means, uh, the only thing we'll say to government is that please have to take this loan, ensure that you're utilizing this loan in a manner that will help you grow the economy. Put them in sectors of the Nigerian economy that will boost the economy and that will see growth post-COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So my, my take simply is that, look, take the loan, but utilize them properly. I suppose it is crucial to begin to think of what happens post-COVID-19. However, let's come to where we are. Nigeria does not intend to negotiate or enter into a formal program with the IMF. Uh, how would this affect the budget finance deficit? Okay, I think let me clarify that statement. That statement was taken out of the minister's speech uh, which she gave about two weeks ago. Uh, my own reading of that speech simply is that the minister is saying that uh, we've exited IMF uh, in terms of you know, facilities that we're taking from IMF. We do not intend to take any formal facilities. However, I believe that there are some facilities like the COVID-19 uh, rapid uh, you know, response facility and all of that, and also part of the 6.9 billion uh, facility that the federal government has intended to take. So we will take some, some facilities from the IMF. How those facilities will be structured and the terms and conditions is what is not clear at this time. P possibly when, when the full details are available, we'll know exactly what they intend to do. But like I said again, you know, uh, a deficit surely exists in our budget. We, we had a budget at, uh, you know, $30 per barrel, uh, $57 per barrel with expected production of 2.18 million barrels per day. That has significantly been thrown out of the window today. <laughs> You know, our body life is selling at less than $20. Uh, we're looking at production in the revised uh, appropriation bill at uh, 1.7 million barrels a day. So we will have a significant deficit. In that sense, if the IMS, again, like I said, is willing to provide some sort of facilities for us, then we should uh, take those facilities. But IMS facilities alone will not bridge our deficit. Uh, and so we'll have to look to other sources also to ensure that we're able to bridge the deficit of our budget. Right. With the situation we have at hand now, is it right to say that the growth seen post-2016 recession has been lost in only the first quarter of 2020? No, no, no. I, I don't think. Um, well, I can answer it two ways. First way is to say, well, possibly. But I think the second answer is to say, um, not likely. You know, let us wait and see what the result will be like when the MBS brings in the you know, the statistics for, for, the, for the first quarter. But what I would say is that uh, at, at, uh, at the end of 2019, you know, fourth quarter 2019, we had a GDP growth of, uh, I think, 2.57, 2.55 thereabouts. Um, year on year, we had 2.27 for 2019, which was 
impressive on the context of what we have been through from 2015 to date. Um, I hope not so. You know, what I would say is that there will be contraction certainly in some sectors of the economy, you know, uh, you know, uh, manufacturing, aviation, hospitality, transportation. But, but there might be, of course, growth in you know, areas like ICT, uh, you know, uh, services, uh, trade, sorry. And uh, so let's wait and see what happens. Uh, when the figures come, come in, we'll look at it. My prayer, my hope, I have to be optimistic and patriotic at this point, is to say that uh, the contraction and the growth will even themselves out and hopefully will not go back to, you know, 2016, uh, um, you know, and then see the entire growth that we recorded since then um, bottom up. So let's, 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 let's be hopeful. I guess we can only share in your hope. And lastly, the Budget Office is also working on a revised 2020-2022 medium-term uh, fiscal strategy paper, as well as an amendment to the 2020 Appropriation Act. Uh, should the time frame for planning be extended to, say, five years for adequate recovery? Um, I'm going to ask an interesting question, because, again, there, there, are, there are two sides to it. One side is that whenever you are planning, you want to plan uh, within this time frame that you can actually account for all the parameters. As we've seen, um, you know, your plans can be thrown out of the window by experienced factors. So, yeah, a three-year plan looks short-term, but also a five-year plan might be too long-term. So what I'll say is this, you know, let us retain the three-year plan that we have, but we can then have a bigger plan, maybe a five- to ten-year plan, that then says, okay, look, we hope that this is what will happen within the next five to ten years. But realistically, for an economy like ours that is, is subject to you know vagaries, external vagaries like oil prices and all of that. I think a three-year plan is really what we should be um, looking at. Like I said, all plans are subject to adjustment, so it's not really in the plan itself. It's in how you execute it and how you implement it. You can have the best plans on paper, and then when it comes to execution, you don't execute properly, and then you can have a poor plan but have an um, excellent execution. So I think what should be important is how we execute our plan. If we say this is what we want to do with the 2020 and 2023, how do we intend to get the revenue to do those things? And when we get the revenue, how do we intend to you know, spend those revenues properly and account and you know, account for the All right, thank you so very much, Michael Angle, for your thoughts there. And please do stay safe. Thank you, Amaka.